So guys, for this effect, I'll need a pack of playing cards that of course can be shuffled. So let's do this right now. And from these shuffled cards, in a moment, I will have you pick a card. Actually, you won't even see which card you pick. The card that you pick is going to be a mystery for the start. So please just cut the cards roughly in the center and the card that you cut to will be secured in this incredible card clip. So if someone tries to switch it out, we'll see it happen. Now, under the same conditions, meaning uh, we'll start with a shuffle pack of cards, I will choose a mystery card like you did for myself, right? So I'll just cut to a specific point of the pack and the card I cut to is going to be my mystery card. Now guys, let's recap very quickly. We both, under the same conditions, picked two mystery cards. Every card in a pack of cards has soulmates, the four of clubs, four of spades, queen of hearts, queen of diamonds, etc, etc. What are the odds that we picked matching cards? Low, isn't it? You guys picked not, sorry, the ten of spades. To make this a very successful, incredible miracle, this needs to be the ten of clubs. So guys, let's get started with the explanation of this trick. If you liked it, let me know by leaving a thumbs up on this video right now. And also, before you ask me, I'm gonna show you this incredible card clip. This is the Warrior Card Clip by Kings and Crooks. You can check out their website by visiting the link in the description box below. Go ahead, show them some love. This is probably one of the most incredible and gorgeous looking card clips that I have ever seen and probably it's yours too. This is made of such great quality, has some weight on it, looks just incredible, very, very stunning, a great thing that you can have as a card magician. So make sure to check out this card clip linked in the description box below. That being said, guys, let me show you how you can perform this effect. So guys, for this effect, you will need a standard pack of playing cards from which you will take out some pairs. And with some pairs, I mean at least six pairs. In this case, I have here, for example, the two red eights, two red sixes, two red fours, etc., etc. And in this case, I have a total of seven pairs. I really advise you to take out at least six of them and the more you have, the easier the trick is going to be, as you will see in a moment. Once you have your pairs, they start up on top of the pack and you're ready to go. You will start off the trick by showing that you have a pack of playing cards that is shuffled and you can show these cards until you reach to your pairs here on top. So once you are in the center, just stop, square them up and go into an overhand shuffle grip as you'll just shuffle these cards a little more. And the shuffling you do is from the face of the cards because these can be shuffled. Before you reach to the stack on top that you made with your pairs, you just stop and just place these back on top. From the spectator's point of view, you shuffle these cards, but actually the top cards are still the same. Once you're here, you will finish your shuffle by giving these cards one last cut. With your cut, you want to get your stack of pairs which are on top into the center of the pack. So the bigger your stack, the less cards you will have to take to cut to the top so they end up in the center. In this case, I have like seven pairs, meaning 14 cards. So if I just cut that many cards from the bottom to the top, this would bring my stack pretty much exactly into the center of the deck. This now means when I ask the spectator to cut the cards roughly in center, the chances that they will cut into my stack is very, very high, and that's what I want them to do. And as I've said at the beginning, if you have, of course, more pairs, you will have more cards in the center for the spectator to cut into. So if you start up with six to maybe 10 pairs, it should work very, very well. So now the spectator does exactly that. They cut, complete the cut, and the mystery card that they cut to is going to get inside the card clip or underneath your card case, right? Now at this point, really no one knows what card they picked. You don't know it either. However, you know that either the top card or the bottommost card 
is the matching card of their selection, right? Because you started with the pairs. To find out which one of these two is the matching card, what I do is the following. When you turn around the pack, if the four of clubs has the four of spades, the matching card beneath it, this is going to mean that this card is the matching card of the topmost card. If the matching card of the four of clubs is not beneath it, this will be it. At this point, this might sound a little confusing, like why that's the case, but when you do it, you'll understand it more and more. So if you just take a look, here you go, the four of spades is the matching card of the four of clubs, it's beneath it, meaning that can't be it. So this has to be the match of the topmost card, the nine of diamonds, so here, the nine of hearts. And that's basically the principle of how you know which card to place on top of the table. The way you get to see of whether the four of clubs has its matching card beneath, you can just pick the card as you're talking to your spectator by just pushing it to the side and you see whether the matching cards are next to each other. You can also do, just like in my performance, you can start overhand shuffling these cards again. Okay, of course the spectators see the bag of the cards. And when you do that, you just peel off the four of clubs and you can clearly see whether its matching card is next to it. If that's the case, you can just continue shuffling these cards as usual, like that, and just stop when you reach to the top third of the pack and slam these back on top so that the nine of diamonds, the matching card, is still on top. You want to end up with the matching card on top of the pack, meaning if it's already on top, nothing to do. If, however, you should be in this position where you start overhand shuffling and you don't see the matching card of the Nine of Diamonds, knowing it has to be here, you just shuffle the remaining cards on top of it, automatically controlling the Nine to the top. Very, very easy. Once you're in this position, as you did while shuffling their cards before they pick the selection, you'll give the pack one last cut, right? So you're repeating the same process you did with them on yourself. This time, however, it won't be a full regular cut. Instead, what you want to do is create a step above the topmost card, the Nine of Diamonds. The way you do this is very simple. Give the pack a swing cut and just throw the remaining cards at an angle from the back to the front on top of the pack. This will create here this little step, meaning when I lift up here, I'll be at my Nine of Diamonds. Okay, so you're here and sort of just throw this pack at an angle on top of the pack. So in slow motion, it comes here and the bottom few cards will get in jock, so to say, so that you have here this stab automatically created. If this sticks out too much, as you place it on the table, either just square these up a little more, okay? Or just take the topmost card and just push it a little back. So when you are here, no one can see the step in the center. Once you're here, you're going to say, as you picked your card by cutting it, I'm gonna do the same thing. What you are actually doing is, okay, let me show this to you a little clearer. You're just gonna lift up at the step, cut the pack here, meaning you cut to the nine of diamonds, the matching card. That's how easy it is, guys. Once you're here, you cut, take it out, and you're done. And this, guys, is basically the effect of how you can end up with the perfect prediction of really an unknown card that you start up with. Of course, this type of trick could be done much, much easier by just doing a force, but this really makes the choice of the spectator so much freer that it really looks very, very fair. That's been said, I really hope you enjoyed this effect. If you did so, let me know in the comments below. But that's it. I hope to see you next time.